Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Directions Mag Geospatial webinar, today sponsored by our friends at Corim. We would like to welcome back Joe Francica and Jean Sebastian Terco. Gentlemen, welcome. We are glad to have you with us today and excited to learn more. Thanks, Barbara, and uh, thanks to everyone everybody who's uh, attending with us here today. I'd like to make it very clear about the objective of our webinar. Uh, while the title is how to tackle a mixed GIS environment, the objective really is to save you money. Uh, when you encounter a situation where you have a, a mixed geospatial environment, uh, you'll have costs related to data conversion, compliance, data integration, maybe even a situation where you need to do some solution benchmarking. Ultimately, if we can demonstrate to you how to save you the cost, maybe of even a software license or reduce the number of duplicate data sets that you buy, or even a smoother path towards uh, cloud migration, then, then perhaps we've done our, our job here today. As Barbara said, uh, my name is Joe Francica. I'm the Senior Director of Geospatial Strategy with uh, Corem. I work primarily with our, our marketing uh, partner and sales teams, and, and uh, JS uh, works primarily with our enterprise uh, our clients or larger clients. Uh, we know that many organizations work with several technology solutions, and, and that applies equally well uh, to business productivity technology, not just geospatial technology. So while, while some geospatial users were employed primarily one GIS system during the course of their workday, we also understand not every GIS software solution fits all needs. And while many other considerations apply, such as the cost uh, and integration with other enterprise systems, we really know that clients simply don't want nor can they change systems easily for whatever reason that may be. So with that understanding, our goal is to present the challenge that one of our clients encountered when they faced a very real situation of a mixed GIS environment. And what we did as an independent agnostic advisor is to help them mitigate some of these challenges and really harmonize business strategy with geospatial solutions. So let's uh, review quickly the agenda. First, we'll look at the challenges we see uh, in the market that impact the ability to integrate geospatial technology with other enterprise solutions. Next, we'll provide one very specific example where a client had a mixed GIS solution, and JS is gonna go into that in very much detail. Uh, we'll talk about the fact that this client not only had a, an ArcGIS environment, they had small world, they had spectrum spatial, and we'll tell you how we addressed what the client was trying to accomplish before recommending a solution. And lastly, we'll talk about what happens if you're experiencing some of the same challenges um, that we hope will get you on a more successful path. All right. the, the Yes, today it begins with a question. Are you vastly underestimating the time and expertise needed to work in a mixed GIS environment? Are your team skill sets, their GIS skills, their data management skills, their data science skills, and their data governance skills up to the challenge? So are you recognizing the amount of data you're ingesting, number one, and are you prepared for the future where the amount of data forces you to scale your operating environment? According to CIO Magazine, uh, they said this in a recent article, just as no corporation could resist the rise of the computer or the internet and survive for very long, no business will be able to ignore embedding data at the heart of operations and remain profitable. And we hope to convince you more about uh, that today. And likewise, as a consequence, no business really is able to ignore geospatial data. And you all here know that better than others. Um, this is something that's obvious to all of us, but may not be to others in your organization. And, and there's more location-based data being created every day, and there's more being consumed every day. And hence, business analysis really can't do without it. So let's go to our first poll. Let's start with a very easy question. Do you believe that your geospatial solutions are fully integrated at the enterprise level? And for context, what um, I mean is, are they in sync with your corporate IT governance? And do they integrate smoothly with the database of record? Or are they relegated, in your opinion, to a departmental level, or perhaps worse, 
data management maintained isolated in a desktop GIS system. So that's the challenge. That's the first question in the poll. And um, hopefully we'll get everybody to chime in and give us, a, give us your opinion. Here we have the results. Interesting. All right. Great results. Thanks, everybody, for, for doing that. Well, OK, so uh, on the bright side here, uh, the golden age of geospatial has arrived, that according to uh, Forrester Research. So if you're feeling a little bit uh, stressed by all of this, you, you shouldn't be. It's great job security for that example. Um, but some observations by people smarter than us. 89% of CEOs, CEOs believe location intelligence is already important to the business. That's, that's great news. By 2020, now that's now, approximately 25 billion connected devices will generate location data. And of course, you know, we're already in, at the end of 2020, so that number is likely to increase. And here's a very interesting statistic. The next 5 million geospatial users will not know what GIS is. Um, but all of this is to say that the expansion and the number of users also leads to more fit for purpose software. And not all of which will be the tools that we've become really familiar with using today. So which do you have? Um, we know many of you um, who join us are, have uh, ArcGIS, but are you using any of these solutions as well? We know how popular QGIS is, for example, with some organizations because uh, of its versatility and low cost of barrier entry. How about these? Uh, do you have BI tools? Uh, there's some really great tools out there for data integration, Alteryx, uh, Tableau. And finally, uh, which enterprise platform are you trying to configure with your geospatial solution? Do you have a system of record like an Oracle database or SAP HANA, uh, Oracle Analytics Server, which is kind of the latest the Oracle release of uh, OBIEE. We, we really understand the complexity of today's solutions architectures and, and how organizations acquire really a vast mixture of not just geospatial technology, but business intelligence, a database, and then maybe some industry specific in software to meet the needs of whoever is your constituents, a director or a CIO. So like I said, it, it's just not those GIS systems you'll see here, but also ETL and data integration and BI analytics, uh, in addition to some of the enterprise platforms. So uh, this then arises two very important questions before we get into our case study. Are you underestimating the complexity of working to integrate all of these platforms to support geospatial data analysis? It's our observation that no single geospatial software technology can do everything, and certainly no BI tool can handle the complexity of geospatial analytics. So the second question is, is geospatial pervasive only in GIS? And I think the answer is clearly no, right? Many BI software solutions have mapping capabilities, and many are quite good. Tableau, as I said, all three. So then the question exists about whether the data should reside only in your GIS. If we take an industry example from like insurance, insurance claims data, uh, many of our clients are insurance companies, should they be in a claim system or should they be in a system of record like a database? Some, sometimes the data should remain in a GIS, but sometimes not. And, and herein lies the question of whether you're making software technology a priority over data quality, integrity, and management. So let's go to our second poll. Maybe you have different departments that just want their own technology. You know, we try to step in as that neutral agnostic third party, like I mentioned, that really can help build, bridge the gap between technologies and, and make certain that, that best practices are used that makes it easier for everyone to work productively. Again, our goal is, is to align with the organization's objectives and having the right fit for purpose technologies um, and data to solve a particular uh, problem. So, Yes, take a moment, uh, look at the question, you know, do you today need to integrate multiple GIS uh, technologies? Do you need to integrate disparate data types and formats? Are you looking for advice and for be and, and about best practices and, and fit for purpose solutions? Or is your organization, um, do they have a knowledge gap? And this is something we see very often. There's not the internal resources, there's not that um, what I would call institutional knowledge about geospatial. So uh, take a moment and, uh, and give us your thoughts. 
All right. So a couple more seconds, folks. Click quickly. And let's share those results. Yeah, thanks everybody for, for sharing. So let's throw in a third question just for good measure. Are you disassociating technology from expertise? You know, we all know technology is great, but you can't separate it from the performance and productivity expectations. And that really starts with hiring the right people. So having the right mix of skill sets is essential. We, we, we kind of believe that. Um, and certainly the ability to establish solution architecture, having those kinds of right people. So there's GIS expertise, there's data expertise, and then there's database admin people that you need. Um, I guess we ask, you know, do you have those right skill sets on hand today? So we want you uh, to really take a, a moment to consider our customer success story. And for that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, J.S. Tricot. Thank you very much, Joe. So nice to talk to you all. So really, uh, what Joe mentioned is really what we're trying to uh, convey here is that, you know, there's a lot of geospatial technologies out there. There's a lot of geospatial data sets and a fully integrated enterprise uh, geospatial is not as easy as, you know, we would all hope. So I want to talk to you today about our customer. Uh, they're a large U.S. natural gas utility. Uh, they're covering about eight states uh, uh, in the southern part of the United States, and they have over 75 miles of distribution data. Their main objective is to be the safest provider, obviously, of gas utilities, but also provide exceptional customer service. So providing ex exceptional customer service requires, you know, as much as you can about your customer. Their environment is definitely a mixed environment. So in the GIS side of the business, obviously they're a strong ArcGIS environment. They use uh, it on the desktop, on the server, and they're migrating a lot of their tools towards that. But given that they're utility, they also use Small World, which is a long time standing utility uh, example uh, environment, and also used a precisely Spectrum Spatial Bundle for different corporate needs. So just on the GIS side of the business, we see there's already three different environments that need to coexist. On the data, data is extremely varied. So we're talking about customer corporate data. So customers, billing addresses, uh, and so on. GIS data, obviously their network, network deployment, equipment location, more of an asset management type uh, of data. And then there's reference data. So reference data is typically data that allows you to know better uh, the impact of your business on the rest of the world. So street data, building footprint, parcels. And then there's dynamically reference data, which is the pretty much the other way around, which is data that can influence your network, uh, such as weather or, or risk or, or events happening near you. So these are all data set that this customer needed or add internally, but needed a way to distribute across the organization. And then, we all know that the GIS folks uh, represent only a certain part of their uh, users, but a lot of the other you know, end users internally were using tools for ERP, such as SAP. Uh, they also use the HANA as a data warehouse purpose. And they also leverage data analytics platform to try to understand failure patterns and things like that, such as Altrix or Databricks. And you know, given that they're a customer-focused environment, Obviously, a field force automation tool is also involved in the mix. So as you can see, in all of these places, there is geospatial needs, but not all of them typically talk to each other or at a single version of the proof. So some of their challenges were really uh, the having a single version of the truth from their location purposes. So I know it seems like in 2020 talking about geocoding is, uh, you know, redundant, but having more and more accurate geocoding and accuracy of a location is extremely important for these organizations, especially when you're talking about uh, equipments on the ground, such as gas lines, telco uh, insurers, and so on. They also needed to optimize routes for their uh, meter reading routes. So they have about 3 million customers distributing 4,000 routes. This is all managed by their SAP system. They needed to be able to optimize those routes. And one of the key challenges around that was alleyways. So no routing tool out there currently supports alleyways, but the, um, <clears throat> the need for meters to be in alleyways in, in certain parts of the country uh, add that requirement. So we need to figure out something around that. We obviously wanted to leverage existing SAP and ESRI tools that were in there. 
And one of the most important thing was to get a complete data and accurate data of their territory. So what does that mean? Is they need to better understand their customers. So uh, that facilitated communi customer communication, uh, understanding high consequence and medium consequence areas, such as hospitals and schools, but it also implies, you know, understanding type of soil. So things like impervious surfaces. So re for an emergency or risk management aspect. So really lots of challenges at different level of the organizations that needed to be distributed and accessed by everyone. So the solution in their case was uh, was multiple aspect, but you now key solution was leveraging Spectrum Spatial Bundle, which is offering uh, routing, geocoding, and and some location analytics capabilities in a centralized platform. The reason this was chosen were for two reasons. One is the extreme accuracy of the geocoding that Spectrum provides with the master location data, which is the most complete uh, high accuracy location data sets in the United States for point level geocoding, but also its integration, its ease of integration with corporate systems such as SAP, uh, the customer CRM, and the field force automation tools. And Spectrum also allowed us to create the uh, custom data flows and alleyways uh, for the alleyway routing, which I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, in the next few slides, but that was uh, an implementation that we could do very fast and fairly easily through a spectrum. So from a geocoding accuracy, as I said, the master location data that we're leveraging here is uh, the most comprehensive point level data set in the United States containing, I believe, over 200 million points of addresses in the U.S. One of the key value of that is it has um, obviously rooftop, but also what's called postman or centerline, which gives us the ability to know where the points were for uh, in the front of the yard. So these two points allowed us to extrapolate the meter that were in the back alley by figuring out the lot size and understanding the uh, where the meter may lay. So those are the orange points that we've estimated in the back end. So of course, this is not 100% foolproof, but given they used to do this manually, this routing, achieving much, you know, any type of highly accurate response was already good. So with this, we tried to route in the different alleys. So uh, we created you know, manual alley routing algorithms. So these, we take into account all the alleyway points, created routes for those, and then we used the routing engine to create routes between those manual routes, and in essence, automated the whole process. And you can see that this route is now optimized. And one of the key uh, benefit for them is you know they used to take over uh, you know two months to create those manually now we were able to run these routes and create and optimize them in about 48 hours now granted this is not um, a typical use case for all but it shows the flexibility and the ability to integrate with the field force automation tool the SAP tool and also uh, leveraging the customers GIS information Another aspect for, for this customer is the ability to have a single source of the truth. I talked to that a little bit. And really, you know, we all know that field force automation tools may have geocoding. SAP has some geocoding capabilities. Uh, and, you know, people would go to Google to geocode. And having all these different addresses, you know, having different locations based on a geocoder was a nightmare for this customer from a governance standpoint. So, what we what we did is we integrated the uh, you know the geocoding in directly into the customer's system. So inside of Esri for the end user, they're not you know seeing any change. They're able to leverage a full geocoding solution that's centralized, leveraged by all systems, which really leads into a single source of the truth. And obviously, by using the MLD point level geocoding, we really improved the accuracy. Uh, of the geocoding versus the typical geocoding solutions that all of these other solutions may have used. Another aspect of this, as we talked about, was data and, and understanding their customers. So uh, that's a key aspect. A lot of the time when we start looking at certain data sets, we, we have a, all right, am I gonna pick product one or product two? And hope I pick the best you know, cost benefit ratio. And really, it's often the case that this this is not as, as simple as that. You know, we all know that no data is 100% complete, no data is equal. So you may have a certain data set better in an area versus another data set that's better in another area. 
So the ability to integrate these different data sets into a single delivery shared across the organization with a, a you know a file geo database uh, that's compatible with all their systems or with web services to be leveraged by existing tool is a key factor and we did this in this case for uh, parcel boundaries and also building footprint uh, i'm using the, the the parcel boundaries example here but we we defined a primary provider that covered most of the states required but you know in certain areas counties were not covered or not 100 percent to our liking so we backfilled those with a second provider and from the customer's point of view they were getting the best of both worlds which was a cost effective solution a single you know delivery so they don't have to do this merger themselves and a single information across the organization to access this data a similar solution was also created as i said for the building footprint which uh, gave them also a different level of accuracy and given building footprints currently are I wouldn't say in the infancy, but at the adolescence. Uh, so, you know, there's not 100% state coverage already. Uh, the ability to combine multiple vendor into a single source of the truth is really what's uh, ticking for them uh, from a need standpoint. So really, you know, we didn't change our environment because that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to help them better leverage all the geospatial assets that they have the geospatial data that's available in-house and out and third party and how to make better decisions internally, right? So, and have all these internal systems that are typically siloed, such as the ERP, the field force, the analytics and the GIS all talk to one another to make sure that everybody's talking about the same thing. So some of the key benefits, I just said it, the single source of the truth, a better data governance, uh, an affordable approach to improve data coverage. So having you know multiple vendors uh, integrated into single one created a more effective solution and also uh, i spoke to that a little bit earlier on but the ability to go from three months of effort to generate the routes and manually manage them to about 48 hours of processing time to create them uh, was a significant impact for them now are we 100 percent perfect no but were they manually as they were not as well. So in the end, we improved the accuracy and improved the time to, to make this, uh, the changes. So for them, it was a extremely short ROI to deliver this solution. All right, thanks, so, JS. Um, so we, we talked about how we approached, you know, a fairly sizable enterprise with their geospatial challenges. And, but we also work with many different size organizations and, and offer a variety of services beyond that, which uh, JS mentioned. Um, you know, for this customer, we did quite a bit of data integration, tried to maintain their uh, existing system, but, but do a, a great deal of, of um, you know, analysis on what they were trying to accomplish in, in the end and, and, and maintain uh, a lot of their existing systems, but integrate it for more productivity. Um, so, you know, we, if you find yourself in a similar situation of, of one of the things, uh, a situation similar to what, you know, JS um, had described, what, what we'd like to just talk about here briefly is, is how we believe we're a one-stop shop for many different types of, of geospatial services. So on the screen, I'm gonna start there with strategic services, which consists of providing a, a better understanding of what you, who would typically be our client, your software and data configuration, but importantly, act as an objective agnostic advisor. Our contract ex advisory services provides an approach to negotiating purchasing solutions, but particularly data. You know, if the client is not familiar with data licensing, for example, or adhering to a compliance a situation and, you, and what's, what's uh, their ability to use that data uh, under the license agreement, that's where we come in. Outsourcing and enablement provides services that are particularly challenging for clients that lack this in-house expertise, this institutional knowledge that I referred to re re uh, before. Uh, in particular in areas like spatial data sciences or even performing software benchmarking like geocoding. And this is something, you know, we get often a lot of requests for and it's very difficult to do. The systems integration, this is for those enterprise clients and, and we have several like Shell and AT&T 
that need our expertise to work in these mixed environments. Um, and, and they require a solution. Um, they're, they're tough on us. They, they require something very, uh, very good. And then the last one there is under managed services. So those are clients that um, have a need for flexibility to work in hybrid enterprise environments where they may have a public cloud, a private cloud, on-prem solution, maybe a mix of APIs. So what we do is we provide the expertise to operationalize the resulting solution in architecture. So we really strive to be you know, both a value-added reseller, but really a complete business solutions provider of geospatial services. Um, these are some of our clients. Uh, they represent some of the largest Fortune 500 companies uh, in the world, AT&T Shell, Miller Coors, Atmos Energy. You know, we have offices both in the US and Canada. We, you see some very large Canadian uh, organizations, uh, Royal Bank, Desjardins, uh, Toronto Hydro and Hydro Quebec. So, so you can see some very key organizations trust us with their geospatial projects. Um, you know, many uh, have different systems of record and, and, you know, this looks like a very scary slide. So <laughs> this may be exactly what your, uh, your, your challenge is. So uh, Jay, I'm going to let you speak to this for a second. Uh, Sergio, yeah, so really the, the, this was meant to be uh, kind of a showstopper or really, you know, this is not as representing the full GIS of an enterprise. It's a couple of departments. So imagine when you start talking about the all the other systems, the ERP, the customer service system, the web-based tools for the customer to register or add new capability, new services. This one was a telco customer. So you can tell telcos have multiple products, multiple solutions they're offering a customer there's a lot more self-serve capabilities on the website so the ability to leverage the wireline the wireless all this information from the source systems then combine that with the you know some external data such as you know um, access points uh, you know where our customers are where our customers are not and giving the information to the end user is not as simple as it seems you know we're able to make this more seamless, able to create a centralized data access point so that there's, this, again, a single source of the truth and a data governance aspect to this that the end user can uh, rely on. Great, thanks for that. Um, so when I talked about some of the services that we provide, I, I had a column there for strategic consulting and under strategic consulting is what we call the geospatial health check. And so we, we engage clients for a, a very specific deliverable, um, and they're listed here. We're, we're trying to harmonize the business strategy and with, our, with their geospatial solutions, and that takes a great deal of listening. So we do really try to sit down with clients, listen to their needs, and, and just try to understand what their primary objectives are. Some of them want to benchmark geospatial solutions. And I, and I mentioned that before specifically with geocoding and comparing some of the various flavors that are out there. Um, software and data needs assessment. Again, sitting down, what have you got in house? What do you need? What's fit for purpose? Where do you need to go? Uh, data quality and geocoding accuracy. We mentioned this in our uh, review of that JS had in, her, in our customer example, geocoding accuracy was, was key. For them and uh, we think we have got a great hold on where we know the best geocoding accuracy exists and finally they're consolidating geospatial technologies um, if needed we'll consolidate if not we're trying to work with what a client has existing we're not trying to change anything we're really trying to do a, a good job of, of integrating and the uh, on the in the lower left hand corner there go to karem.com slash health check uh, check out exactly what, for more details about that. Okay, um, one last thing uh, bef we'd like to do is take your questions. So where do you want to start your geospatial transformation? Where, where do you want to go? Um, we'd like to engage you for some of your questions maybe that you've had during, um, during the presentation. So uh, we're happy to uh, take them now. And, and Barbara, if we've got a list, um, why don't we start? So my, our first question is for JS. Uh, you mentioned during the presentation that you established a single source of truth 
Was that a file geodatabase or an, another existing database? So really, uh, this is not a simple answer. It's not a single database that was the uh, version of the truth, right? So depending on the data, so as an example, customer data, customer locations uh, were you know, in the systems database because that's where they get updated, they get added. However, equipment data was in the you know stored GIS database because that's where it gets produced and maintained and updated. So in the end, it really depends on uh, the systems and who's creating and authoring the data. So it's a data governance aspect. And the single source of the truth also applied to having a unified geocoding solution across the organization and all systems. So there's this is a very varied and various answer, but that gives you an idea of what uh, meant by a single source of the truth. Excellent, thank you. Um, Guillaume is joining us. Uh, so Guillaume, welcome. Uh, he's been hanging out in the background. A question for you, how long does a typical health check take? Thanks for this question. So um, at CREM, uh, we've talked about, let's see, we call a health check. We have assembled a um, different level um, of detail or uh, offer if, if we can. So um, it's it's basically uh, going to a, like a bare minimum of four days, depending on the relationship we have with this customer or um, the, um, let's say, the, the level of commitment to uh, full-fledged, let's say, uh, L check to 15 days. So it really depends on the business challenge of this client and uh, the need. But we, we could say that the, like the bare minimum L check could be around four days to uh, around 15 days. Excellent. And a question for you, Joe. Um, you said in the on the health check slide there, um, that you could consolidate geospatial technologies. Um, someone wants to know, is that necessary? Yeah, the easy answer is uh, no, and not necessarily, right? It, it's going to depend on what the, the needs are of the individual client. So um, it, it's not always, it's gonna be necessary. That's not the main objective. Our, our main objective is to listen to the client, understand their needs, and give them a recommendation of how to progress forward. So, Excellent. Okay. Uh, so a couple of questions for you, JS. Uh, what is the approach to an enterprise geodatal model or schema? Um, do you stick to out-of-the-box standards, or is it a hybrid model? Definitely a hybrid model. Uh, you know, standards are great in most cases, but in certain areas where we're talking about non geospatial tools, in certain cases, it's hard to stick to exact standards. So we try to be flexible, make it as seamless for the end users, because ultimately we want to make it easy and ubiquitous. So it's kind of a hybrid model. Excellent. And someone would like to know if you have clients in insurance and retail. Absolutely. So we work with uh, most of the large PNC uh, insurers in, in US and Canada, as well as um, some health insurers as well. And also our retail, uh, we work with you know, some of our largest customers in the retail space, um, again, in both US and Canada. So we do absolutely have these, these customers. Wonderful. Guillaume, another question for you. Someone would like to know how they can uh, use that tool after geocoding the address data. So typically uh, we, we sign uh, some kind of NDA when we receive uh, address data. And um, unfortunately it's only benchmark and it's on a, like, let's say pre-sale kind, kind of thing. So you, you cannot do anything with those uh, geocode address data because uh, it's tied to a, a contract or a, terms and condition. Uh, sure, if you moving forward and get a subscription, you can use them. This is really uh, depending on the platform. Some platform will allow you to store the data. Some others won't, uh, won't uh, give you the, the permission to store the X and Y, but you, you will keep, you could keep the address uh, parsing data. So it really depends on uh, the provider and if there's a, a contract uh, put in place. Excellent. 
So just to remind folks, um, do stop by karim.com slash health check to learn more about that option. Um, a very warm thank you to our talented team of folks that has uh, shared all these great solutions with us. Appreciate you all stopping by uh, as well. And uh, just keep an eye on your inbox today. We will be in touch with a link to the recording, a link to your attendance certificate, and um, some other information for you. If anyone has uh, unanswered questions, the good folks over at CRIM will follow up with you via email. Uh, we really appreciate your opinions on the survey on the way out, and we hope that you go make it a great day and tell a friend about CREM and Directions Magazine. Thanks, everybody.